Hello, hello.
Hi, Eileen. Hello. Oops. Oh, wait, Kevin's gone. Hi, Kevin. out again. Hey, Lauren. Yep. You have the link handy. Could you send it to Kevin? The Zoom sure. Link? Okay, she's sending it to you. All right, see you soon. Bye. All right, give me a second. All right, I had a couple different email addresses for him, so hopefully. Yes, right. I always use two. I, I don't know which one he uses, so yeah. I use them both. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I have it somewhere, but I didn't want to get all, I didn't want to lose my Zoom focus here. Yeah, definitely. And I hope yours, I, I just told him, I, uh, I think I mentioned to everyone, everyone should be signed up to get those automatically. Do you, do you yeah, get it automatically from the town? I did from last month's email saying to do that. So I had like seen those before, but didn't realize how extensively you could get alerts for. So I signed up for a bunch of them. So yeah, I did too. I had handy. some before, but today I signed up for a whole lot more. Um, I think I hadn't, I didn't have planning board before. Um, oh, an agricultural commission. I don't think they meet very often, but I thought given the, you know, we're talking the Hanson Farms now. Right. It might be interesting to find out yeah. you know, what, what they do. And um, town council I've been on for a while. Not that I go to all of them, but once a while, you know. So. It's just nice to like know when the agenda is posted rather than like check the website and see if it's actually up yet. Right. Yeah, and it's definitely worth um, checking the agenda because sometimes, yeah, things things pop up that I there was something I just looked at recently and I thought, oh, if I had known that was there, I would have listened. <laughs> All right. Hi, Maureen. Hello. I made. Hello. Yeah, good. All right, we've got a quorum. Kevin's. Trying to call in, I assume. Lauren, Lauren just sent him the link, so we'll see if he gets it gets in. Hi, Pat. Hey, Eileen. Becoming an honorary member. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the curious one. <laughs> I wanted to show you my frizzy hair today. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah, this is the weather. <laughs> You've got that kind of hair. It's wild today. 
Did I see you at that chess thing last night? Yeah. That was you? I yeah. saw I saw a picture. I thought that was a wonderful oh, event. Oh, that was really fun. Yeah, that's good. I I was I played with somebody who had never played before in her life and she beat me. Oh so no. I don't know if I'll go back. <laughs> oh. Not that I'm any good. I learned from my brother when I was 12 or something, but you know, at least I knew where the what the pieces were named and how they moved. She didn't even know that. And she still beat me. So. They said they meet every Wednesday. I didn't know it yeah. was happening. Yeah, I'm going to go back. I enjoyed it. Has it been ongoing, though? I mean, um, this was the second week. Oh, OK, good. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. Yeah. All right. I, was I think I'm glad to see some women there. Yeah, there were a lot of women. I mean, there were people of all There were old ladies like me and there were young kids. And yeah, it was yeah. nice. It was a nice mix of people. It seemed like there was sort of a group of young men who had organized it. So it's a wonderful thing. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and get started because Nicole told me she will be joining us sporadically because she has to take one son to one place and another son to another place in between trying to be on the, on the call. So um, hopefully we'll hear from her sometime, but can't be sure of that. So, um, so we have a quorum. Um, just to review the agenda, I just want to remind myself that I want, I mentioned to all of you that I wanted to add the master plan review to the agenda. So we'll talk about that under new business um, because I, we, I got that notice from the town community and economic development office that I forward to all of you about um, review of the master plan version that's out for comment now. So anyway, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but we'll add that under new business. So did everybody get the April 29th draft minutes and have a chance to look at them? Lauren's shaking her head, yes. Yes. Maureen? Mm -hmm. I may have, I didn't look at them. You didn't look at them. Right. I, I, I don't remember. I've looked at so much, on, <laughs> I don't remember. All right. Um, Kevin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I did. Did nope. you look at the minutes? Yeah, I, I I didn't I looked I looked at them briefly um, when I was coming back from lunch uh, today. All right. Bit, Any yeah. comments? Or are you ready to approve them? Anyone? Can they? Do we have a motion to approve them? We'll make a motion oh. to approve them. Yep, I'll, right. I second that. I second the motion right. to approve. Any Any discussion? Any amendments? Corrections? Hearing none. They are approved. All right, thank you. So the next item is uh, town staff if available. And I don't, I haven't heard from either Mike, Michael or Steve. Um, so I'll assume that they're not going to join us. Um, the new business, two, two items under new business. One is the Lake Nip restaurant project. I forwarded to you sometime today, um, a letter that I had received from Melissa Raymond Detta, that was in uh, May 17th, actually, that was, this was actually on the agenda for the planning commission meeting that we attended, but then it was withdrawn. So it wasn't considered that, that day, but um, that was, she was sending it at that point, I guess. And did it, have you had a chance to look, read the letter? Yeah. Okay. So I guess, um, as far as I know, this is not back on the planning board agenda yet. I don't see it on their, their next, next meeting coming up, which I think is June. I think there's one at the end of June and I didn't see this on the agenda. So I don't really know what the status of this is. Um, I don't know if, if um, Lauren, Maureen or Kevin, were you aware of this when it was proposed in February, 2020? Yeah, yeah, I remember oh, the discussion. Okay. Yeah, all right. Were you at that public hearing, Lauren? No, I saw the Facebook debate about it. Okay, all right. So it was, um, it's uh, the people who own the property across the street, the hotel and the development there, the, the apartments, et cetera, are, they own, a, a, they bought a lot right next to the parking lot for Lake Nip, where the, the boat launch parking lot is. And I don't know when they bought it, but anyway, they proposed putting a restaurant on that lot 
and it would require a zoning change and um, some, you know, variances to wetland setbacks, uh, various things. Anyway, they, there was a lot of opposition. There, there was a hearing in February 2020, a public hearing at Town Hall, one of the last ones to happen before COVID probably on this and uh, certainly on this. And um, the, the opposition was pretty overwhelming. There was only one person who spoke in favor of it, as I recall. But then nothing happened. Um, they, they withdrew it and then it appeared again on the agenda on May 19th when we were at the planning board. So I received this letter from Melissa and I just, I, I don't know what we wanna do about this, if anything. Um, she's raising a good point, I think, that it is the goal of the Open Space Committee to protect scenic vistas, water resources, streetscapes, et cetera. Um, and, preserve important wildlife and a vegetation habitat. So we might want to consider submitting comments. Um, right now, there's nothing to be said about it because we don't know what it is. And I guess we can be pretty sure that we will have another chance to meet and discuss this before the planning board actually takes it up as I don't see it on their agenda, but I just wanted to, to get it out there and get your thoughts. Um, yeah. Anybody have any thoughts about whether they would they think this is something we should get involved in comment on if it comes up? Well, j just the um, well the first thing that just just pops into my mind um, that I'm just kind of curious about myself is what was the do we know what the the major um, reasoning was to against uh, having the restaurant there? What was the big uh, what was the big rub with with most people? Um, yeah, okay. Well, a lot, you know, there certainly were a lot of people from the neighborhood um, who just, who don't like development in that area. You know, I think there was a lot of opposition to all of that uh, development that went in there. Um, I know I, I got up and spoke because I didn't know anything about the project. And when I went to that meeting, and I didn't, I didn't speak on behalf of the Open Space Committee, I just went on my own. And I was astonished that they would be trying to put a, a restaurant on Lake Nipponikian. I just... I mean, I, I just thought about, they have all that land across the street where they could put a restaurant and why they would have to, to have it on the lake right next to the, the boat launch. And, the, and I mean, I've kayaked there and it's, um, it's, a, it's a, a recreational area and it's one of the really important areas in terms of environmental impacts to the Hockamock Swamp. Um, it's, considered a, you know, a pretty high priority environmentally um, sensitive area as far as I know. I mean, I'm not an expert on it. Um, and so I was just, it, and it, it also seems to me that when you're driving along there, it is nice to be able to see the lake too, which is, you know, along, uh, there's certainly other houses there, but there's no big development on that side of the lake. And um, mm -hmm. anyway, so I commented that I was, um, and, and given the fact too, that it's, it's it, it, they have to get a zoning change and then they have to get a number of, of um, uh, bylaw, um, I'm sorry, um, wetlands issues were to be resolved too. And it just seemed like it really doesn't belong there, but they had enough, um, they have enough money and, and resources and consultants and lawyers to do what needs to do, needs to be done to, to push it through as was a lot of people's concerns, I think. Um, so anyway, that was that was my personal feeling at the time, and sure, that, that's. But I mean that you know that's not that doesn't mean that is the, the intent of this committee. Or I mean, it, how do we feel about it in terms of our overall statement of purpose? I guess. Well, whenever whenever I drive by there, I um I know that there's I know I know the I know the lot that we're talking about because I I drive there for my. Uh, for my surgery, I had to go down there all the time, and there's not much there in that. That it's, it's like I know there's like an old like furniture store that hasn't been in business since for like 20 years. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> right not where it, yeah, it's before you get to that though, Kevin. Do you know where you turn on on turn right on Lakeside Drive when you're heading towards Raynham? Where the boat, yes. where the boat, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that that old furniture store is further down, like on Route 138, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, that's further down. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So this is right, right at where you turn on Lakeshore Drive. 
there's that boat launch right right there where you or if you want to get on the lake for anything i think that's the only place on that side of the lake anywhere where there is boat access and then that the lot that that has been bought is just to just adjacent to that and that's where the the restaurant is proposed with it and it would have a water you know a deck out over the water and you know, take you're trying to take advantage of it being a a nice spot so but anyway yeah they want the ocean view they want the lake view right. uh, Right. About it, yeah. Right. Well, I, I, I personally would be concerned about the, the, the sewer, the cesspool. You, you know, where, where would that all go? Is there public, um, sewerage into that area, or is there, it, is. there is. Oh, okay. There is yeah. Wow, lucky people. Um, that's well, that's one good thing, but. Yeah. You know, there are, there are questions that run off from the parking lot, I think, too. Um, it's, it's, I forget how many parking spaces there are going to be, but they're, you know, they're, they're right, right on the lake as there, there's just not. There's, yeah, there's, it's a pretty narrow strip of land in terms of. Yeah, because you have all the oils and all the everything else from the cars that might run into the water and you have to be concerned about that. So anything yeah. additional than what they already have from the parking lot for packing with the boats as it is, that's that's probably a lot that goes in there. Unless yeah, and the boats themselves, yeah. Um, but um, I think that'd be a concern. But also with all the um, variances you have to have, it's kind of telling you it probably doesn't belong there. I just mm -hmm. want it for the for the beauty of it all, but perhaps that's not the right spot for it. Okay. Well, well I, I Oh, Kevin, go ahead. I, oh, I just—I was just gonna say, like, I imagine, I imagine the homes that are already on the lake, um, you know, that that are that are already established there, they they have to have their sewerage, you know, it's gonna be the same kind of system because they have to tap into the same main um, for sewerage and, and for wastewater. I mean, if 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 people can use the same tunnel for that, why why couldn't a restaurant? I mean, I, I know, I know, it has more discharge and everything, but I mean, it's it's kind of the same thing, no? No, yeah, I think, that's, I think Pat is Pat saying yes. They they would tie into sewer, but not for but but the the non-point runoff um, from the parking lot does not go into. There's no way to collect that is not collected through sewage system. Anyway. Okay. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. And Pat, you said there. What, what is there? There's a, a creek that runs. On, is it under um, the highway, the, the road, or there's a stream that comes from the wetlands across the street on the Claremont side that runs through a culvert under 104 and then makes its way into Lake Nipponicket. Now there, I know there are strict regulations, environmental regulations, that you cannot build. Uh, within so many feet. I think it's 50 feet of that stream. The wetland setback they're looking to have removed is 100 feet uh, because they wanted to build right at the edge of the water. Just uh, a lot of uh, variances and uh, waivers that uh, just don't seem acceptable, at least to the neighbors, <laughs> of which I am one. <laughs> Well, I'm not a neighbor, but I don't think if, if you have to make that many variances, I don't. It just it's just not right because they it's, need residents for the next people who want to come in and do something. That's true, and it's zoned residential. It's it's zoned residential. That's what the house that they bought. Yeah. And they feel, well, we'll just change the zoning and yeah. you know we'll we'll keep on going. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. No, that's yeah. Yeah, because once they build one one building, then who's to say they they're going to say, oh well, there's already one here. Why can't we do a that's second right. one or a third one? Yeah, and that's what this letter from Melissa, this Melissa Ramondetta points out. I, I, I she says that it appears that Claremont owns a number of, of other parcels along that um, besides this house. So whether they're acquiring more land there or not, you know, I, I don't know how long they own those others or or how big they are or anything, but um, Anyway, yeah, because it could be one of a, one of a, a initial set of proposals. Who who knows? But 
Those are very tiny lots that they bought. Uh, and I think they got them from the Commonwealth, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, the other thing that I that there certainly were a lot of comments to, uh, to this effect, you know, uh, at the, the public hearing, um, yeah. uh, you know, just the, the number of, number of var variances and in, in ordinance changes and et cetera that are required. I mean, I know that was my comment. It's like, why is this even being proposed? other than because you've got enough money to, to hire the lawyers and consultants to do what you wanna do and change all the rules for you. Mm -hmm. and, um, the, the planning board that evening seemed ready to vote it down, um, but there was a decision at the end to, and uh, I, I shouldn't say that because I, you know, from what I read somewhere, I guess it, they were, I think they were just, it was just an advisory. They weren't actually voting on the proposal um, officially at that point. It was, do you remember, Pat? I, well, I, I didn't really know. I don't, I'm not that familiar with their process. And there was something I read just recently. I, think, I, thought, they, I think they were allowed some additional time and they were going to come back, but then they withdrew. Yeah, so, so we never saw it, it never carried through. Yeah. It just was moot for a, a oh. while. And okay. then we hear that it's coming back. So we'll have to see what the proposal is. Yeah. I'm sure they'll say, well, we'll take care of that stream or we'll, you know, we'll only want, we'll only want half a waiver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, but does anyone have a, want to make a motion about what to do on this? Um, you know, it might be, we, can, we don't know exactly yet what we're, we, would, we would be commenting on. We probably need to wait to see it, but if at least if it's something we know we want to pursue uh, maybe if somebody would like to make a motion to that effect. Well, don't we have to wait until see what the proposal is before? Yeah, we... but you know, if just a motion that we should pursue it would be sufficient. Yeah, idea. okay, we could make right. a motion to yeah, no. to pursue it. Uh, see what what the motion, what the proposal actually is going to be. Right. And, and see if it's something that we need to state about. Do, do we know if the development will, um, will, will, will adhere to the 50 foot rule from the stream um, discharge into the lake uh, from, where they're, from when they're gonna, gonna build? Will they adhere to that and, and make sure that that's, um, I mean, by law, I'm sure they have to, they have to do it, but I just wanna make sure that is is that does anyone know if that's going to be adhered to as I far think, as I think uh, Pat, uh, Pat knows more about this than than anyone else I think and I think you just said Pat that they were asking for a waiver of the hundred foot setback, originally right so they probably they're I'm sure they're going to to fine tune that that whole you know presentation but we'll we'll just have to wait and see and and when you say discharge what do you mean Kevin because you know, everything should be, you know, controlled or designed, you know, they'll probably have Larry Silva and he always has catch basins and <laughs> everything that you need to have. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I, I, I didn't, I, uh, for, uh, I apologize. I didn't, I didn't hear you when you, when you said we have to wait and see. I didn't, I didn't hear that bit about the, the, uh, the 50 foot rule with the, with the, the stream. Um, the stream. Right. Yeah, it's pretty important. I just have to find that map again. I'm still looking. It's a GIS environmental map, and it shows you know exactly how close the stream is to that house where they're going to put the restaurant. But uh, right, like, like Eileen said, I'm not an I'm not an expert either. Okay. <laughs> well, I, my my gut. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Maureen made a motion that we should look into this, consider it, find out more, and probably keep abreast of it. Can we can we amend the motion? Can we actually meet with these people? Or we we can't we can't meet with the developers, right? No, no. I want to. Okay, yeah, we can. Yeah, so I, I second the motion. We should definitely pursue it and and make and ensure and ensure that. That as an open space committee, that the that if it is going to be approved, or even not approved, but it, but the proposal is within 
um, you know, it, it gets it gets kind of filtered through us a bit, you know, for to make sure they're adhering to one, the law, and number two, for the wishes for uh, the stakeholders around the, the property. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other, any further discussion? All those in favor, Maureen, Mo Maureen's motion as amended by Kevin. Um, all right. Okay. Thank you. I will draft something. Read it carefully when, when it comes out in your draft minutes because it's fairly vague, but that's okay. I think we got the sense. We just want to, we need to, we need to keep an eye on it and we, we may submit comments as it moves forward. So. All right. And then the other new, um, new item is the, the master plan. I sent those comments around that letter from Nicole Sol Salvo. Was anybody else able to open up that Dropbox? Lauren, were you able to? I, I wasn't able to. I, I downloaded Dropbox and I tried to get it in. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, figure. yeah I already had Dropbox on and I couldn't open it. Lauren, were you able to? I mean, I was able to open those two files that had links right in the email, but I didn't have time to investigate further to okay, see if okay. I could get into the whole Dropbox. All right. Well, I, I cannot. And um, I, I did. I sent back to Nicole that Nicole Salvo, who I think is new in the in the Community and Economic Development Department. I'm not sure, but um, because there was not a word document attached to it, and she did send that out to me again, but I couldn't tell if she sent it out to everybody. She, I told her I didn't find it, and she said, "Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to attach it." But I don't know if she sent it out to everybody on the list or to just me. I um, it was just a short summary of um, there was it didn't include all the plan. It, it, had, it had the time to time frame and how they wanted comments, et cetera. But yeah, I'll, and then the other thing that opened up was the matrix, which allows you to make comments. And they want comments from every committee as a committee. And I think they want them by the end of June, but they note that that may be difficult for committees who only meet once a month. And so they're giving us the option of submitting them later. So I, I think that's probably what we'll have to do. Um, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in touch with her. I was hoping that maybe someone else on the call had tried and been successful and could help me. But as none of us have, I'll have to get back with Nicole and, and find out what it is we're supposed to be reviewing and how, how we get access to it and try to give it all to you and then I don't know, I may try to, to convene a special meeting at some point if to see if if it, it's really something we wanna submit substantive comments to, if there's, there's points in there that we really need to make, if there's omissions that we think need to be addressed, um, then in, in, if it's important for us to do that, we may try to have a special meeting or maybe I'll just confer with them and make sure that it's okay that we submit comments afterwards and we can do it sometime in, in early July. So we'll see, but anyway, look look for more information on that. Hopefully I'll get it straightened out with her and, and be able to let you all know how, how we go about looking for that stuff. I know it's funny, I was looking at the master plan recently, just partially in connection with the Hanson Farms property. And one of the things that kind of jumped out at me is it actually makes very little reference even to agricultural properties and preservation of agricultural properties in town. I was kind of surprised, but anyway, that may be something we want to bring up. Okay. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that the master plan is, is more geared towards like the economic like development and building and infrastructure. And it's definitely yeah. more leaning towards that for sure. I got that yeah. feeling too. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Okay, so um, Kevin, you when do you have to get off? You have to get off now. Um, I actually have a few extra minutes because I'm going to be a little bit late for my appointment. I was driving from Hingham, so I'm I'm just driving at the moment and, and talking. And I forgive me for not having my video on. I'm just driving. I got to focus, but yes, uh, I have I have a few more minutes for sure. Okay, great. Okay, and I think Nicole just joined us. Hey, Nicole. Oh well. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> Here, let's give her a second. Maybe she's in the car too. 
Good hi, morning. Eileen. Yes. Yep. Hi. hi, it's Nicole. Hi, everyone. Hi. Sorry. Okay. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Okay. hi. Glad you could join us. Um, do you have a few minutes, or are you are like five minutes, ten minutes? How? What do you have? Are you driving? Um, or are you I'm not driving. Or? No, I'm not okay. driving. I'm back now, safe. So I'm. I got some. I got some time. All right. Good. Well, I just want to tell you what we did. We just decided we we took up um, two items of. Well, first of all, we approved the minutes. Um, the last time, if you have anything you want to add to that, you you can. But um, if, if, if so, speak up now. Um, any approvals or omissions or anything that you saw in the minutes? Um, nope, I'm good with that. Okay, all right. The other thing we just talked about was that I sent that letter out that um, someone had submitted about the Lake Nip restaurant project, and we talked about it. Talked about that project a little bit. I don't know if you're familiar with that. There was a big public hearing in February 2020 that some, um, some of us attended and um, not, not as part of open space, but just individually. And it's uh, wh what we just decided was that we need to keep track of it. We need to monitor it. There's nothing active that's actually been resubmitted to the planning board now. What they submitted back in 2020, they withdrew after hearing a lot of opposition whether that's why they withdrew it or not, who knows, could have been COVID, I suppose, which because things sort of came to a standstill right after that. It was actually on the agenda for the May 19th planning board meeting that we attended, but then it was withdrawn. Um, and so it's not on, on the upcoming planning board meeting that I looked at online. So we just need to track it and um, we just had some some discussion about you know it's it's requiring a zoning change and wetlands variances and uh, maybe just not the right project to be right on the lake. So anyway, that's what we approved. Right. And the other thing we just talked about was the master plan. Oh, and you were oh, so you may be able to help on this. So. Um, I have not none of us have been able to access the Dropbox. Were you able to get to, did you try to look into in that for whatever we're supposed to comment on, Nicole? No, I, I, I saw the email, but I haven't got, I'm so busy with work right now. I didn't get a chance to look at any of those links. Okay. All right. Um, well, there, it, first of all, there was a word document that should have been attached that wasn't. And that I, the, I have received that now, but I still can't get into the Dropbox. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll find out what's going on. And they want comments by the end of June, which they recognize may be difficult for committees that only meet once a month. So we'll have to come up with a plan, either submit them late or possibly try to have a special meeting in June just to talk about that if, we, if it's something we need to, to have a, a serious discussion about, so. Okay. All right. Well, so, do we also have the flexibility to coordinate comments from our committee by email, since technically we're not like a, we're just like an advisory group where we, I don't think we have the same public, you know, access as some of the other boards and commissions. Well, maybe that's true. I don't know. Um, if you read there, there's like a, a three paragraph introduction that came out with that Nicole Salvo's memo. And the memo was actually from Jennifer Burke, but the email was from Nicole Salvo. And mm -hmm. I understood it that it said that, you know, you are a town committee or commission that we, we think we think you have an interest in this. Please uh, confer with your committee. And as a committee, make oh, okay. comments. That was, okay. that was my understanding. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. And they, I mean, I, they, they're asking for comments from individuals as well, but they do want one document from committees. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, each committee will submit their own um, like comments. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So now we're moving on to that old business. First item, just the May nineteenth joint meeting with the planning board. I don't know if anybody has any reactions or um, comments about that. It seemed to me it was worthwhile. Oh, oh I, I thought it was great. I mean, it was really it was kind of short. We only had half an hour, of course, yeah. and it was a bit short but the time that we had i felt like it was pretty it, it was it was insightful yeah. from my point of view yeah anyone else any comments i mean i think it's good that we did it since um you know it is a relatively newer group just to 
get it on people's minds that we exist, that we, you know, can have some expertise and to, you know, think to include us, you know, when things that are relevant to open space come up in the future. Yep, thank you. Well, I did have a, I met with Ray Ajemian a few days after that. Um, I, I had gone through the planning division, the planning regs or bylaws or whatever they are. Um, and there's a number of places where the words open space appear, you know, for various, various aspects of what they're reviewing. Um, and I was just curious about whether they take advantage of those opportunities, how often open space issues come up in their, in their discussions. And um, I think, I, I think kind of the message I, I or, or the, what I got from Ray is that, that that can be a good role for us um, to look for, you know, as projects come before them to be mindful of them and, and over, take a look at what's being proposed. And if it's something big, you know, we might want to delve a little deeper and see if there are open space issues that could be addressed that haven't been. So it could be our role to try to bring some of those things up, even though the planning board probably has the, the authority to do that the way their regs are, are written, but maybe they don't, you know, they have, may have so many other things that come up, so many other issues to deal with in every project that it might be a role for us to put a little more emphasis on that. So um, it, it, you know, it's a lot of work. I mean, <laughs> looking at all those projects that come through and, and you know, going through all those, uh, that I think that's a really hard job, that, that committee. I, I wouldn't want to be trying what, to leave. One thing I notice is like, is that they're like, as a, as the planning board in Bridgewater, they seem like they're insanely busy. Like it was like, it's, it's like, they must have a lot of proposals before them. Yeah. Right uh, now, especially I think. Yeah. It seems like. Yeah. And then, I mean, yeah, the and I, one and, that was this yeah. controversial was that, you know, the Broad Street project, I mean, they, that's, that's really, um, that's a, that's a hard, you know, really controversial one. And, they're in a hard spot and you know they're they have to raise issues that people don't always want to hear and so I, I think right, yeah. right. Yeah. So. well Eileen do you see in the future what do you think like so for example if we had been formed in the old field the states was you know before planning board and we were aware of it you know hence I wonder if we could um use you know our role as a committee to advocate for things like what we've been pointing out was a shame didn't happen like oh that project would have been you know a great opportunity to restore that rainbow parking i mean the rainbow playground you know things like that i think that we perhaps could try to you know leverage open space improvements as part of um you know large-scale developments where there are negotiations about you know betterments um, to be made in the town. Yeah. Right, right. That's it. Yeah, that's I it right there. Yeah. Completely, Nicole. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, that's kind of what so I'm So we got to keep an eye too. out. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the future, we just have to keep an eye out for these big things that come yeah. forward. Could yeah, I make a comment? Pat, Pat, go ahead, Pat. Um, you know, when uh, Claremont was doing the flex building over here, it, it's like a three acre building, 90,000 square feet plus parking, et cetera their contribution to cutting down all those trees was $7,500, which is, you know, a drop in the bucket. Yeah. So maybe things like that can be addressed in the future. Yes. I don't mean to interrupt. I just, I got to get going for my appointment, right. but um, yeah, I just, just want to let you know, just be, I didn't want to blip out. All right. Well, thanks for joining when you could, Kevin. Oh yeah. It's my pleasure. Thank you for, you know, thank you for setting everything up and, and <laughs> it's great to all see right. you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for inviting me. All right, see you later. Okay. See you later. Bye. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what we need to do. And I think we, you know, looking at their ordinances, that can give us a, um, the, the place to do that too. You know, we can say, oh, by the, you know, in addition to us just coming in open space, you know, we can point to what they're reviewing and saying, is this appropriate under this particular section of what you're, what you're, it, you, you use as your guiding um regulations and subdivision regulations to to do something like that so yeah and i think you know i think from what ray was 
telling me too that they they need those kind of comments when they're reviewing projects. Well, just like you know this this letter that I got from this Melissa Remondetto, that's it's good for other for people in the public to to bring things to our attention as a committee because we can be a voice for for the community in that respect, yeah. and um, I think we can be a voice for those issues to the planning board as as a committee. So, um, yeah. I would, on that on that idea, is there a limit to to the number of people that can be on this open space committee? You know, that's a good I, good question. Yeah, I thought of that myself just just today. I don't know. I mean, we five is what we what is appointed, but I don't know. In any town committee, can you have more than the number? Nicole, maybe an ad hoc or something. Yeah. And people could be listening to what's going on, and then they could because it's so much so much that this committee could actually be involved with. Perhaps we could have some people watching what's going on on the plane, but then letting us know, hey, you better keep an eye on what's happening, you know, with that because there's some construction going on and maybe you need some input into what's going on here or there's something going on over there and maybe you need some input with this, but we can't quite cover everything because we're just volunteers. We've got to have other things going on in our lives also. And if we yeah. have people with their, you know, feelers out, it could help, help yeah. this committee. Yeah, that's a good thought. And, you know, maybe it's kind of a project by project issue too, you know, um, like for instance, you know, maybe maybe Melissa is, is kind of a go-to person on this project or, or Pat, you know, as, as if this Lake Nipponicket project moves forward. Um, and I'm thinking of, um, we're gonna talk about Wyman Meadow again uh, later on. And I think I've mentioned I think I mentioned that on the last meeting, I think it was before our last meeting, that I had gone out with Monica Bentley, who's yeah. very involved in a lot of town open space. She's particularly involved in the river, the Taunton River Watershed Council, and she's um, in pulling invasive species out of Styles and Hart, working with Steve Sobel and, some, and Harry Bailey and some other volunteers. So she's very interested in lots of things, but she's she's resisting getting on a town committee. She doesn't want to do what do deal with uh, meetings and agendas and minutes and stuff like that. But she might, you know, be a good person, for instance, in Wyman, Wyman Meadow, you know, or I I know she's very involved in Styles and, Styles and Heart, but she's so interested in river access that the, the Wyman Meadow might be a project that she'd be willing to help us out on too. So yeah, I think that's a good idea, Maureen, that we can all, we should yeah. always keep our minds open to, and, um, specific things where we can get other people to help out because you're right there's there's always going to be so many projects that we might right. like to examine cl more closely and comment on or you know be involved in and we just aren't going to have the time so yeah. you need watchdogs <laughs> That's right. I, I think one named pat might be helpful right yes <laughs> yeah Okay, so um, yeah, I met Monica. I met Monica as well. I went. Um, my son and I actually did some of his volunteer work with her. But you're oh, right; yeah. she is. Yeah, I think okay. she put us on the face the uh, town Facebook page too, which was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, just we, we we like worked for two hours pulling this invasive mustard. We uh, yeah, garlic, yeah. garlic garlic mustard. mustard. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but she also mentioned that, um, you know, told me about the fact that the Taunton River has this big, long gap as it goes through Bridgewater where there is no place to put the, you know, get a canoe in or out. Yes. Which yeah. is an access issue, but I'd imagine also a safety issue. So perhaps we could almost link that idea, you know, to safety for, you know, and think of ideas maybe to get funding. Um, yeah. That typically tips to the top of the table rather than, oh, it would be nice to have this. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if a that's a valid issue because she says it's like 10 miles from one put into the, the next put out or something that it's really right. too, too long of a, a, of a safe kayaking or boating stretch. So that's, yeah, that's what it sounds like. That's pretty, so, I would have never known that, but that was, see, that kind of information is good to know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So is that anything else about the joint meeting with the planning board? All right. 
So the next item is to the to rescheduling the meeting with the Conservation Commission. I haven't heard from Steve um, again. Um, I I don't know. I, I I felt like if the planning board got us on ahead of time, then maybe the con 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 com couldn't could have as well. But for whatever reason, they didn't. So it just didn't seem to me that it was worth however many of us sitting, waiting to come up for an hour or two hours. I've been to enough CONCOM meetings to know that they can drag on a long time. So um, particularly that when we didn't have any particular item that we wanted to discuss or get their approval on. So I think maybe the next thing we should do is just be, try to get back on their agenda, but have something specific we wanna discuss and maybe get some action from them. And the, the possible, uh, topics that are in my mind are one is Wyman Meadow, um, which we'll talk about a little more. But I think I mentioned that the last, I can't, I, I can't remember what happens before the last meeting and what, what I've done since. I don't, I, I went out with Monica Bentley and I think it was, it was before, it was before the last meeting. Yeah. Cause when Michael Dutton was on, um, I'm, I think I talked about this and that I had talked with Scott McFadden at Wildlands Trust, and that that this is a project that I, I think we ought to we ought to advance because they really need they're trying to get access to the the land that they owned adjacent to the town Wyman Meadow that they don't have any public access to, and um, so I think I did bring that up then, and so I think that would be something that we could go to the Concom because that is a Concom property. I mean, jurisdictionally, they're the ones who it's one of the parklands. So if we wanted to go to them at some point and, and find out, you know, are they in favor of us working with the Wildlands Trust on something or other? Um, I think we would probably need some, uh, they're okay at some point. So that would be one. Another one is just, we had talked about Carver Pond water quality issues, you know, whether we should, there should be some water quality monitoring there. And I know Harry Bailey, who's on the CONCOM, is in favor of that. I had a conversation with him. So that too might be something we could bring up, although I don't, I, I, we don't have this, that on our agenda right now in terms of an assigned project. So that one's kind of out there to be, to be assigned at some point if somebody wants to take it on. But I think that would be a little further out. The other one I thought of is the park signage, because that the parkland signage would be something the CONCOM would have to um, be in favor of because it again those are their their properties, but that one too I think is is not on our immediate agenda. I, I kind of feel like our our agenda I feel is kind of full at the moment. I mean after sort of floundering around for a year, I feel like we do have some things we can really move ahead right now. So um, I think we had to focus on what we're focused on for a while. But so I, my thought is that we not to reschedule the meeting with the concom immediately to wait till we have something specific we want to discuss with them. Does anybody have any other thoughts? I think I agree. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I agree too. It's the summer. So with people traveling and, and schedules, I think that, that would be hard to organize anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I totally agree with you on that. All right. Okay, so the next item I, is a joint meeting with the Community Preservation Committee. That's been, that's taken off, I'm taking that off the agenda. I was on the CPC um, meeting, oh, I don't know when it was, a month, oh, two weeks ago or something, I think. And there, this came up, um, uh, Carlton Hunt was suggesting we have a joint meeting. And um, I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure what the point of it was really. I, I feel like, the Hanson Farms isn't far enough along. We've, we've talked about that at the CPC meeting the last two months, um, and I, I reported on it to them, and I'll and I'll tell you where it stands also. And I and then the other thing was just um, he said, well, we want to, you know, they have a plan. The they, Community Preservation Committee has their own plan of what sort of open space projects they want to see come forward. And he said, well, you could give us an update on where you are on that. But I feel like that. I don't know. It's just it's premature. I think we have some things that we're working on, but we don't have a lot to report on about them yet. So I, I, I suggested that that meeting be deferred and, and he agreed and he was gonna just tell, tell Gina Glasconi who's chair of that. So that's off the agenda. So um, pre-committee, Nicole. 
what has that um, committee been convened? Yes, we had our kickoff meeting um, the Tuesday this week. So um, really, we didn't get any you know work done. We basically just did introductions and kind of Michael, um, you know, introduced all the members of the committee, and we um, kind of set our kind of official kickoff meeting. And he kind of just gave us a little understanding of the background behind it, including just a quick review of the research that Elijah had done. Um, the, the, you know, he's no longer with the town, but he was the assistant planner. And then he also actually shared the, the, the research that I had done with the group and thought it was, you know, really definitely worthwhile, um, you know, a pursuit. Um, Shirley Krasinski was on, is on the committee as well. And she, I think, feel, felt very strongly about focusing on the clear cutting, um, you know, and, and really, you know, refocusing in on that specifically, although everybody agreed, obviously, that all of the um, significant trees in the town would be worthy of, you know, saving and salvaging, and that would be both on private and public land. Um, the group also consisted of, um, oh, I got everybody jotted down here, Bill Maltby, who actually con is considered the town's current tree warden. Um, how, do spell, how do you spell that, Nicole? Maltby is like M-A-L-T-B-Y. Okay, all right. And then there's, there's representatives from different um, departments. So for example, Azu um, was there, who's the DPW director and the yeah. highway um, superintendent, which is, uh, I flipped my notebook and now I lost my little page from the other day. Paul DeCosta. Yes, yes, yep. And then Jennifer Burke was present on the call. So um, besides Shirley and myself, I think there was only one, you know, I guess, quote unquote, resident um, that's not employed by the town. Um, but I think everybody shares the same, you know, goals. And it will be helpful to have members of the town there because, I mean, they are pointing out the fact that, like, you know, where the town has sewer and drainage easements and water easements and things of that nature, you know, it, they obviously have trees that they need to remove um, to, to do the maintenance, obviously, to be able to manage the assets, right? So it's going to be good getting feedback from different points of view just to kind of help advise, you know, um, reasonable, I guess, um, requirements moving forward. So it's going to be a good group and um, we're going to meet, we're having trouble though, because summer's starting. So of course they were trying to coordinate everyone's schedule, but I think another meeting has been scheduled. That's going to be in early July. Okay. So and even though we want, did, yeah. Nicole, did you say there was a third um, citizen who's other than you and Shirley? Yeah. I'm still trying to find my little piece of paper. Mm -hmm. you know that's if you can't find it just send it yeah to me. i will uh, i will just when i send whenever i send out the minutes you can you can drop the name in we'll start talking about something else and then i'll find it yeah okay <laughs> um so i think that's really it on that front i'm not going to do like any more specific research till we meet as a group um you know to kind of just roll up our sleeves and kind of figure out you know where this is going to go but it seems like everybody's pretty much on the same page and I think it's just going to be a matter of trying to do something quickly which is probably impossible to do in a <laughs> in a, in a big group setting oh here it is um so it was just Michael Shirley myself no so that's it just I would say just myself and Shirley and I, and you know, Bill Maltby, Azu, Paul DaCosta, Jennifer Burke, and Michael Dutton was there. However, I'm not sure if he would be in future meetings. I think he just kind of introduced us all and, you know, basically officially created this tree committee. Um, and that's it. He did point out that there is a shade, a current shade tree ordinance, which is really the, what we'll be building off of. 
Um, so what I was going to yeah. do is kind of read that and just figure out like how strong that is. And if we are to, you know, find ways to provide more guidance or restrictions on the clear cutting is, is, is it going to be able to be molded into that? Or is it going to have to be something completely new? That's what I, you know, I don't fully yet understand that I haven't fully, you know, done that research, but we yeah. shall see. Yeah. And that is one of the provisions I noticed in the plan and the planning division regs. I noted that there is a, a section entitled shade trees. Mm. And so, you know, so they, they do have some, some ability to look at that now, but I, you know, I don't know. It says something about how, you know, what you have to plan stuff like yep. that. But, and actually yeah. I happen to be reading the towns. This actually kind of relates to the conservation commission as well, but Bridgewater has a wetlands bylaw, which yeah. does, set forth some more stringent requirements than the you know state DEP wetlands protection. Um, and one kind of broad statement that is stated in the front is that part of their purview is um, cutting down trees or and or planting trees within the buffer zone. So there is, you know, there may be a connection either with the tree committee or with our group with conservation that we can kind of understand what, you know, what they typically look for in the applications when it comes to the, you know, the tree cutting. Yeah. I have, you know, I feel like the, the, the focus tends to be on the very technical because they have to manage stormwater and they, you know, have to do this and that and have these certain setbacks and whatever it might be. But I'd be curious to see if there's, you know, anything more that we can do with the open space actually in the wetland buffer zones, you know, particularly making sure that, you know, it's um, viable open space, you know, not just left as some sort of like dirt or gravel where they can say it's open space, but perhaps something that's, you know, performs a, a function for habitat and water quality and everything else. Yeah. So I'm yeah, starting to they, see these connections. I know they definitely look at that just from personal experience. I have um, my neighbor um, cut down a whole lot of trees around the wetland in my backyard and I mean, it's it's his property in my backyard, but and he he did get a he did get his knuckles wrapped, but they wouldn't find him. You know, it was after the fact. Mm, yeah. The trees were gone, um, and they said no, you can't do that. You know, and um, but it was it was too late. So, but at least yeah. they said no, you can't do that. You know, our red <laughs> you can't cut trees down within I don't know whether it's twenty feet of you know twenty five feet of a bordered vegetated wetland or whatever. So. So I think the regs do cover it, how, you know, how it's enforced or how, you know, but anyway. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, Pat, do you want to mention the, um, uh, I, I think, I, I can't remember if I told you about this or not, Pat, um, but Pat sent something about native vegetation. Did I send that to you, Nicole? Oh, right. Yeah. I Nicole, saw. did I send that to you? I. Yes, you did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, yeah, good. I had intended to write and ask you about that, but uh, it was a Somerville uh, native planting ordinance so that maybe we could find some way to require any new developments to actually use the natives as opposed to, you know, Japan or wherever they get plants from. Even that Broad Street development, I, I had told Eileen that I looked at all of the plants that they were planting, and most of them were really good. They only had one ginkgo, which is not native, of course. It's a beautiful tree, but it doesn't do anything for pollinators or, yep. you know, uh, wildlife. So, um, if we had an ordinance like that, maybe maybe we can require these developers to to be more cautious, to be more mindful. Uh, I, I don't know how you folks can actually present an ordinance. I know that I've done resolutions, but they don't do anything. Uh, I guess you could have a, a council or present an ordinance, or your committee could present an ordinance to the town council for whatever benefit. Yeah, I think part of the tree ordinance, I could imagine, would absolutely you know, require um, planting of native trees. I'm speaking specifically to trees, yeah. um, you know, and I would imagine also that the, the definition of a significant tree or a protected tree would, pr would probably um, 
for the most part, include natives. You know, I, I'm, it will include natives. I'm not sure if there's exceptions yeah. that a non-native, like, large tree is a good thing. I, I'm not, like, an arborist, so it's nice to have that, that you know, that committee has some more, um, you know, background in that area. But one thing I do know, Conservation Commission, especially because it is a big deal in the Wetlands Protection Act, that I think that they will, they are typically looking at planting lists and helping really? to ensure. Well, that's part of the, part of the, the submission requirements include landscape plans, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they're doing like replanting in, in, in areas. So, I mean, I don't know to the degree that they scrutinize every species, but it is part of the submission. And native species are, um, you know, rec basically, I don't know if they're required, but pretty much required by the Wetlands Protection Act. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's a little bit that we could do through through that avenue as well. But I 100% agree. I mean, it, it's both planting natives and also um, dealing with invasives. Right. That's a huge problem because the invasives yeah. are just taking over, yeah. which are typically the non-natives. Yeah. And I'm sure you agree, Nicole, it's a lot of work to go through a project like that and say, you know, that's not native, that's whatever. And I, I don't know who's actually going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know if somebody did it on the, 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 um, uh, the building, the town building, what about the academy building? I mean, oh. I think they, they have native vegetation as near as I can tell. I mean, they have vi the viburnum and um, the, um, it, it looked to me like somebody made some effort to, yes. to, to do something that was certainly drought tolerant. And, you know, it's, it's not just a, a whole lot of petunias and things. It's just, it seems, right. like, you know, some kind of a, a, a planting that was somewhat mindful of them. I don't know if it was, but it looks to me that it ended up that way. And the fact yeah. that they did that with the Broad Street project, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if it isn't becoming a little more commonplace, Pat, you know, that, that some of these projects, they- I, yeah, I, mean, I yeah, think when you have, have, yeah, when you have professional, a professional team that includes, you know, say architects and engineers and landscape architects, that would be the bigger projects, like something like the Academy building. The, you know, any professional landscape architect is extremely mindful of, you know, native plantings, you know, it's basically part of their core um, right. mission in life is, is to actually do that. So I think it's probably more where you've got, you know, development happening with, you know, that is, that, that may not have as robust of a team with as much expertise. And, you know, you just sort of have um, somebody going, you know, going out and buying plants and just kind of throwing them in without much planning. I think that that's where you get to that, those problems. Yeah. Right. The well thought out big projects that are going through planning and conservation, I'd be surprised yeah. if they, you know, because they, they should have a professional doing a, 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 you know, an official planting plan. Well, I mentioned that in a letter to the planning board and I know they read it, but oh. that's the end of it. You know, it's like, hmm. You know what happens after that? Uh, I pointed out, you know, that they did a good job, or I thought. I mean, I'm an amateur. Uh, they did a good job on native plantings, but then that one ginkgo and and uplighting. You know, I'm a, I'm very concerned about night sky lighting, and it's like, no, they don't need an uplight. <laughs> so, but it doesn't go any further than my comment. So, you need the regulation. You really do. Yeah. All and right. then enforcement. I mean, yes, enforcement. Yeah. A developer can say, "Yes, I'll I'll have all down lights," and they don't. Yeah. They don't have them over here at the Marriott. So, and and they were supposed to, uh, but so regulation and enforcement is the answer. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be a lot of follow up. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Sorry, I don't ever want to hijack one of your meetings. I just, want, I, I think right. it's really wonderful what you're doing. Okay, we have not hijacked. We're moving on. <laughs> All right, thank you, Nicole. All right, so um, let me tell you what's been going on, going on with Hanson Farm. Um, I'm at the last meeting. When Michael Dutton was on, um, I mentioned that the, the at the Community Preservation Committee meeting in April, 
Um, they said that they think the open space committee should be the lead on working with the Hansons who want to do something um, to ensure that their land stays in agriculture. And so Michael agreed that that we should be the lead and the I was instructed to reach out to the Hansons and and find out where they're at. And I did. I met with them a couple of days afterwards it was my uh, David and, and Bob and their son Brian, who is with his wife going to be taking over the farm when when David and Bob retire. And they know exactly what they want to do. I mean, they they want to they want that the, to remain is in agriculture, so they understand the concept of having a restriction on it, and that there has to be money that transfers. That they they've gotten an appraisal and an and a survey. The appraisal they they are keeping confidential as they should. And so, what is their property worth if they sold it for a subdivision, which is be its its most valuable um, price? And then, what would it be if it's uh, kept in what is it worth kept in agricultural land and then the difference is the you know the price of the conservation or agricultural restriction and that's what you need funding for as part of one of these deals is so you know is it who's who pays the Hansons that difference and usually it's the town or it's the state or sometimes it's a, a nonprofit that's involved with preserving land so, but anyway, the Hansons understand all that. And it's, it's really now it's sort of a question of um, uh, how, what the timeline is. Cause I went, I went over again, um, you know, after I reported to, oh, I talked to, I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm losing track. I, I talked to the Wildlands Trust. Scott McFadden is the director there. And I talked with him about some other issues when, we, when I first got on open space, just cause, you know, wanted to, open lines of communication. And he is quite excited about the project. Wildlands Trust has worked on a number of agricultural projects and um, gotten the land preserved. And he's um, willing to come and talk to the Hansons anytime. Uh, they, they kind of serve as a consultant in, in, the, in the sense that they aren't paid for um, transactions like this. They just serve as the expertise and in, in putting parties together. and identifying sources of funding, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, and then of course the town would have to be involved as well. And I know Michael mentioned getting some kind of a task force together, right? And so then I, I talked with the Hansons again, I went back a few weeks later and uh, David was feeding the chickens and Bob was out under a tractor. So um, I talked with David for a while and went over to talk with Bob, but by that point he was, completely under the tractor and uh, so I didn't talk with him but I, I I'm kind of pushing I'm, I'm eager to get going on this <laughs> but I have to kind of step back because I really really have to leave it up to them and I don't know how this is a, obviously a really busy season for them and so I'm not sure how quickly they're ready to, to move and Bob hasn't gotten back to me and, and that's fine but I, I do have a commitment from Wildlands Trust, was, which is the point I'm at now of being able to say that he's come ready to come and talk with them and advise them and help them answer, because they have a lot of questions still that I can't answer. And um, I think they, they are still coming up with questions as this moves forward a little bit in their own thinking. And so I'll just see how, how interested and willing they are to get some advice from Wildlands Trust or elsewhere. Bob has some consultant that he thought might be, uh, he might be able to, to work with as well. So, but anyway, that's the that project will move forward. It's really just a question of when and how. Um, so, and I'm just going to keep pushing it without being too pushy. So, anyway, Eileen, in any of the conversations, has anyone brought up the trust for public land? Yeah, because they were involved with the um, Bur Murray Needs Farm. Okay. Because yeah, they, yeah. I, I, that this seems like something they would potentially be the nonprofit to help get involved with as well. Yeah, you know, and I'm trying to remember if they um, see this really see the 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 Murray needs actually involves some public land. Mm -hmm. You know that there's hiking, um, there's a hiking trail around it, and then there's mm -hmm. open space that's not agricultural land. The Hansons would not be that. It is just going to be agricultural land. 
So, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it, it's worth contacting the, the, the TPL, but I'm not sure if that's the kind of project they would be involved in because it, oh, okay. doesn't, it doesn't involve any public access. The, oh, the I other, think that, they help mediate those so that in case, you know, I think they'll help the help the provide funding for a town to actually oh, acquire okay. the land so that it does not get put into um, it, it does not become a development. So I wonder if that is part of the funding that could kind of make up that difference that you were describing yeah. before. I, I think that is what they do. Yeah, okay. You know, I think I asked Marilee Hunt about that too. I, I can't remember what she said because I know she was in, on the Community Preservation Committee chair when the Murray Needs Farm went through. And I can't remember if she told me, um, but yeah, I'll take a look, another look at that, Nicole, because I did bring it up, but for some reason I had the sense that they were not the ones to be involved here, but I don't, I, I can't expressly say why. So and the other, the other group that can be involved in these is the, the State Department of Agriculture. They do funding specifically for land and particularly when there is a succession plan for it. If they have a farm, they'll even help a farmer find somebody to come and farm it. If, if the farmer wants to set it aside for agriculture in perpetuity. Um, but that, I guess there's, from what the Hansons said that they've heard bad things about the program and Scott McFadden at the um, Wildlands Trust said yes, that they've gotten a bad reputation that they didn't respond to farmers concerns. They didn't, they were very bureaucratic like a farmer well, if a farmer wanted to change the use of their property, you know, let's say from cranberries to something else, um, once they were they had an agricultural restriction like that through the state, it was kind of it was very rigid. And but Scott thinks that they've kind of cleaned up their act and that they've gotten better and more responsive to farmers, and they also have a big pool of money. So whether it's a question of you know if the if the town would if the like if we had enough CPA funds. Um, maybe the agricultural restriction wouldn't be the way to go, but if the town didn't have enough funds or didn't want to pay for the entire um, cost of the transfer, maybe there could be some agricultural funds through the state and then the town could make up the difference because there's some question about the, uh, the I know the Hanson said that the, the town, state usually pays a very low, they have, they have a set amount that they can pay and that it's often too much based on what's the going rate in Western Mass versus Eastern Mass for property. And so that they don't they don't pay as much. So anyway, that was another issue that came up is just um, dealing with that agricultural department. So, okay. So I'll, I'll what I can also look to is to um, see, um, see if we can find out in Middleborough, they have that sole homestead, which seems has a, has a very significant agriculture history. And so I don't know who purchased that land and how that all happened. So it might be interesting to look at that. Yeah, I'm kind of familiar with that. I take rug braiding classes out there. Oh, I love it there. Yeah, I do. And they're definitely interested in sort of this getting funding for their land because there are, you know, like the trustees who have different reservations and farms across the state, they, you know, people can donate their, their land or donate a conservation restriction, restricted, restriction to them. And then those farms can be run for sort of community purposes, maintaining it as agricultural land. And then they would sort of get the huge tax right. write off. For, You're talking about the trustees of re reservations, right, Lauren? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, and I, I think what you're pointing out though is that that's different, right? I mean, because no, they want this is going to be this is going to continue yeah. to be a commercial property owned by their son. Yeah, you know, so I yeah, I don't think they they're thinking of it in terms of any public access. So, all right, let's move on to Chapter sixty one properties. Anything to report on that, Lauren? Well. You know, since I got that email from you that there's that list in the open space plan from 2017, I didn't like sort of, I mean, I, I went to look at the list in the, the open space plan, but I didn't keep 
sort of looking between the maps of parcels and that list. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to do <laughs> something with that, but I wasn't quite clear what we wanted to what do wanted since to do. it's in that plan already. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think maybe that would be the, the thing to do is, well, first of all, find out how, how many of them are still open space. Because since 2017, some number of them must be developed. Okay. Um, and you know, and I don't, I don't know how you do that. Um, hopefully, somebody at the town. Could well, start. you sent me that list that they generated recently, so I could cross-reference the two lists to see if some properties are on the old list that aren't on, oh, and vice versa. How 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 recent was that list I sent you? Where did I get that from? I don't, I don't know. You sent me an attachment that you had gotten right. from the the yeah. the town, so I would imagine they would have done right. a recent. Okay. All right. I don't remember whether that was the. I don't know how recent that was. That's the only thing. I, I might have just gotten that from one of the from the twenty seventeen. I'll take oh. a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But anyway, yeah. And then I don't know exactly what to do with that either. I mean, it's like, yeah, let's find out what's you know what's still open. And then once we know that, um, I, I, interestingly enough, one of the conversations I had with David Hansen, he, he seems to know, every, well, I, I mean, I guess it's not surprising. He knows everybody in town. He knows who owns every, every parcel of open space. Um, he knows where they got it. You know, was it family property? I mean, how much of it they sold off X number of years ago? So my thought was like, maybe when we have this list as clean as we can get it, you know, he might be a person to sit down with and say, what do you think about any of these properties? Do you know if any of these people might be willing to enter into any kind of an agreement with the town to, to set it aside? There's probably people who know as much as David, um, but I don't know who they are. And Harry Bailey might be another one, Harry Bailey on, on CONCOM. So, you know, that, We'll have to figure that out at some point, Lauren. You know, once we'll, we'll get this, see, get the list clean, and then we can see um, where where to take it. Right. Yeah. the The other thing I remember in the open space plan was that there was about I don't know, like four or five specific private lands which were even called out specifically as to really supporting the character of the open space and the rural character of the town. So I know, for for example, one of them is the property right next to me on Auburn Street. And so they would call it like, you know, the Imhoff Farm on Auburn Street. And uh, so I, I can see if I can find that again. I remember seeing it because I, you know, kind of tried to use it as a in a butter to that property to, um, you know, <laughs> oppose the solar farm that was proposed right. there. But um, I think that, you know, it could be interesting to figure out what those properties are and sort of see the status of those four or five that, you know, were prioritized, I guess, as having a significance. Yeah, that's a good point, Nicole. So, yeah, so that that might be the another step then, Lauren, is, you know, once you have that list, then, yeah, look through the documents and find out if they are mentioned specifically. In fact, one of the things I was a little concerned about, I, is I th well, I think I mentioned when we were talking about the master plan that it doesn't seem to, re to refer much at all to agricultural properties and preservation as being a, a priority. Um, and, the open, and even the open space plan doesn't, uh, the more I read, read through it it, it, it seems to focus so much on, on recreation, um, open space for recreation, passive and active. And, and very little reference to agricultural properties. The, pro the plan that does focus more on agricultural is the Community Preservation Act uh, Committee. They have their own plan. And that one talks qu uh, quite a lot and, and more specifically about agricultural preservation. So that, that list that I sent out, uh, that, that email we just got this week from the Community and Economic Development about looking at the master plan, that would be a good place to look to Lauren, you know, for, for these, for these issues, see if there's anything mentioned yeah. in there. And if not, you know, maybe that's one of the, one of the things we use this for is to, is to say, you know, let's, let's give a nod in these documents about, you know, maybe preserving some of these parcels either by name or just by chapter 61 or whatever. I don't know. 
And I, I don't know if they're taking comments at that level. I'm not sure what they're really, you know, this, the master plan has been in development for a couple of years now. So Nicole has been on that committee. So she might have some advice for us when we get to that point about um, how, how to comment and... Um, well, I think like for our, our, our groups, you know, since we're supposed to provide comments as a committee, we could have a section in that on chapter 61. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's, so that's something else you can be thinking of now as you're going through that list is if you look at that master plan, see, you know, what, what connections there are and if there should be some that aren't mentioned. So Sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I advocated for it and it really came out in the public comment period anyway, is the preservation of the, um, you know, of that rural character and some of the cherished spaces. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like the comprehensive master plan does support that, you know, it's kind of doing a few things. It really wants the town to, to, you know, economically grow, but, mo you know, specifically focusing in the downtown area, right? But people commented on, you know, when they think of Bridgewater, they think of Hanson Farm, you know, so that, that is how important it is that that was discussed yeah. at every comprehensive master plan meeting. Yeah. And the yeah. rural roads and, and such also, the character of our roadways like Auburn and there's a few other that have the characteristics of a, you know, a, a true rural uh, or scenic byway or whatever they yeah. call them. Yeah, and vistas, yeah, just roads, yeah, even like a section of South Street across like from Harvest Lane, that, not too far from me here that, yeah, the people just like, they like, they're used to driving there and seeing the open space and it becomes part of the town's character at some point and yeah, can it be preserved, so. Okay, all right, thank you, Lauren. All right, so this last, this thing here about High Street Jam, this is, this is, committee's kind of been kind of uh, weird. I mean, I'm on it because they just, Michael decided that open space, uh, historic preservation, community preservation, I think those are the three town agencies that are part of this um, task force to consider mitigation for loss of the historic dam on the town river and the high street bridge, which is also historic, um, which would have to be removed if the dam is removed. And the dam, of course, abuts, um, or the bridge abuts the Ironworks Park, which is one of the town conservation lands. So the this, this, this process is complicated and, and I don't want to spend much time on it, but it's just the, the federal government is involved in this because it's, um, uh, I'm not sure why, but at any rate, they are. The state is involved and when you remove a historic property, you are required to mitigate to the extent possible. And what we decided in this committee, which included the consultants who are working on the project as well, and who are very well versed in all these, these historic projects and how you mitigate is that probably the best we would come up with was creating some signs, some kiosks in the Ironworks Park and possibly removing some of the rocks from the dam and having a place where they could be stored in, in the park or adjacent to the park with references to the historic nature of the bridge and you know the, its construction and what's significant about it in historic terms. And it would just be an, an additional amenity in the park. Um, some, some kiosks um, are already there that just talk about the history of ironworks, et cetera. And there was some discussion in this whole group about, well, shouldn't we ask for money to restore that, that large stone building that's been falling down for years? You're leaving, Pat? Okay, bye. Thanks for joining us. Um, which would be exorbitantly expensive. And the town has tried to do something on that before and it's failed. The, consult the consultant, the contractors didn't want to do it. It couldn't be done, whatever. Anyway, what's come out of this is um, that you know they will the, the state is going to do something in terms of a canoe launch on one side of the of the the of the dam um, of the bridge rather when it's re, when it's rebuilt, and that we, these kiosks would be designed as part of the whole project. And then it was this weird thing, and like we had these we had two very long meetings. I think they were two hours each. 
and throughout the meetings, I assumed that, that part of this mitigation process was that the feds or the state were going to pay for this, but they're not. So the letter came out, the MOU establishing the mitigation um, agreement, and it said that Bridgewater was going to pay for everything that needed to be done. And, and I was, I was, my head was spinning. I, I just couldn't figure out it. Anyway, so Michael submitted a comment letter based on what me and uh, Steve Rogan and, and Carlton Hunt, who were the three representatives from the, th th from the three committees said, basically, we don't understand why we're paying for this. So I don't know, that's, that's all I can tell you. I mean, it's, it was, it's, it's a very strange convoluted process and whether it's, it's actually going to happen, I guess, depends on how much money um, comes through at different federal agencies. And anyway, I'm only reporting because I'm attending it as part of the open space committee. And so I wanted you all to know, but that's all I, that's as, that's as much as I can explain. It's a mystery. So um, anyway, I think that's it. And then I have for our next meeting, July 1st or the 22nd. July 1st would only be three weeks because we're a week late this time. So I, and July 22nd, I'm gonna be away in between those two. So July 22nd was the next possibility. And then I- Yeah, I'm, a, I'm away on July 1st. That, I mean, you guys could have the meeting, but okay. I just, I wouldn't be right. able to join. Yeah, yeah okay. me neither. Oh, okay. All right. So then let's do it July 22nd. Is that okay? Yes. All right. All right. And then, as I said, um, I, you know, if if in looking through that master plan information, I think that we need to reconvene to give comments, especially now if we don't meet again till July 22nd, we may definitely need to, if we, if we want to submit comments, we may need to do that. So I will send some notice out. But in the meantime, if you all could take a look at those uh, master plan documents that were sent out. And if somebody is able to figure out how to open that Dropbox and can let me know before I contact the town office again tomorrow or the next day to get some instruction from them about what to do. If you do, let me know. So um, otherwise, I think uh, that's it. And Nicole, you know, you might be really helpful um, when you look at those those master plan documents. I mean, you're much more familiar with them. You might have a sense. Maybe you and I could have a phone call at some point about the best way to integrate comments and submit them. Okay. Yep. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy okay. to do that. I mean, the good news is that there's there's a section specific to open space, open cultural and open space. Uh -huh. So we don't, besides the executive summary, you know, we have, we, we know exactly where we need to focus. If I don't know if they're giving us the whole document to review or what. I think they are giving us the whole document. To yeah. Review, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The so directions, have, the directions do say like, you know, if you're on a specific committee, like focus on your section. So yep. there's no expectation that we'd be reading the whole thing. <laughs> right. Right. No, I know. Well, some of this, the content though, it like might be integrated throughout the whole document. Ours is pretty clear yeah. cut. Yeah. yeah. Or we might, if we want, we might see things in other, other areas that are contradictory to what the open space goals are or something too, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. 100%. That's probably true. So yeah. is anybody able to open that or not? So far, we don't know because Lauren hadn't tried the Dropbox yet, and um, oh, Nicole, okay. I don't think you have either. And plus, oh, okay. Nicole, no, I didn't try yet. Plan committee, so she had a she may right. not know the password all anyhow. So, well, if you find out, let me know, please. Yeah, I did yeah. If I, when when I find out, I'll send something out to everybody. And if okay. Lauren, if you find it out before I do, or if Nicole finds it out before I do, uh, send it out to me because I'm going to. I'm going to contact that Nicole Salvo in the town office, um, you know, either the next day or two to find out how to get into that. I keep hoping that someone else is going to contact her and, you know, out of that whole long list that she sent out and say, we can't get in this and you didn't attach the yeah. word document, but so far she's yeah. only heard from me, so. I was expecting that also. Yeah, so maybe no one else is going to look at it till the end of June, so <laughs> I've been too diligent. But. Carlton will. 
Okay, thank you, everybody. 559. Thanks. How was that? Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.